Aqua farming has been rapidly expanding since the industry started out in the early 1970s and has grown into becoming Norway's third largest export. The aquaculture industry produces food in a sustainable way. A question which is often asked in regards to increased production volume is whether the release of nutrient salts, like nitrogen and phosphorus, could have a negative influence on the environment in the form of eutrophication. Providing a sufficient answer requires understanding of what nutrient salts are, where they come from and how they affect the environment. Just like plants on land, algae living in water are in need of nutrient salts in order to grow. Nutrient salts are a natural ingredient of the sea and are supplied mainly by the coastal current and surface runoff. The upper layers of the fjords in Norway are for the most part nutrient poor. During spring and autumn, the wind and weather along with surface runoff contribute to stir up the water masses. This causes a natural resurgence of nutrient salts in the water, leading to increased growth of algae. You can clearly see this during spring, when higher levels of nutrient salts in the upper layers lead to a resurgence of microalgae. The fjords turn green. Nutrient salts from salmon farming come into the surrounding water masses mainly from two sources, redundant fodder and fish feces. Salmon fodder is made by natural ingredients from both sea and land and contains, among other things, nitrogen and phosphorus compounds. Fish fodder makes up approximately a third of the production cost, hence all aquafarmers carefully monitor the feeding in order to avoid any fodder going to waste. This would have a negative effect on both cost and the environment. Eutrophication means exposure to a higher level of nutrient salts than normal, resulting in the alteration of the water's natural state. Research has shown that the adding of nutrient salts can lead to various changes in ecosystems along the coast. As a direct result of this fertilization, you may find increased levels of algae. In some cases, if the fjord is nutrient poor, adding nutrient salts may have a positive effect. But where the level of nutrient salts is too high, negative effects can be observed, either as a reduction of biodiversity or aesthetic deterioration of recreational areas. Norwegian seafood is marketed as a high-quality product to consumers increasingly concerned with the ecological footprint of food production and that production does not take place at the expense of a sustainable environment. What is unique about Norwegian seafood production and what makes it a leading global player is access to fjords with clean and good water. The aquaculture industry is totally dependent on the quality of its locations. Hence, aquafarmers are highly concerned with finding production sites that have a minimal effect on the surrounding environment. It is in the aquafarmer's own best interest to place their facilities in good locations, since production efficiency, as well as the welfare of the fish, relies on good water conditions. Locations being considered for salmon farming are therefore subject to pre-surveys, where the seafloor's condition, biodiversity, water currents and possible environmental effects are taken into account. After salmon farming has begun, a whole range of environmental parameters are kept under surveillance to ensure a sustainable and efficient production. Marine surveillance is a project documenting the ecosystems of fjords used for aqua farming. Its purpose is to keep the water quality under control and detect any anomalies over time. Any sign of eutrophication will result in decreased production levels and force everyone using the fjord, both on land and sea, to take measures to reduce their influence on the area. The project monitors water quality, seafloor sediment and macroalgae communities. The method for monitoring water has been developed by scientists and is standardized all across Europe. Norway has passed its own provision of law, the water provision, describing how this is to be conducted. 
In order to assess the water quality, a water sampler is used at four various levels of depth, 0, 2, 5 and 10 metres. The water is then sent for analysis of nitrogen and phosphorus compounds. Further on, a SETCHI disc is applied to measure water transparency and a CTD to measure temperature, salt levels and chlorophyll fluorescence. This data provides valuable information about water quality and the amount of algae in the area. Sediment tests are performed with a Van Veen grab sampler in order to determine particle distribution and organic contents of the sediment layers. In addition, the deeper sediments are analysed for copper, phosphorus and zinc. Further on, the sediment is washed and sifted in order for animals to be picked out for fixation. The animals are then analysed to determine their species and amount in order to ascertain the composition of species on the test station. Over time, these samples provide good insight into the seafloor conditions. In order to say something about the seaweed habit in the area, an ROV films the conditions at various stations. Filming is done at depths ranging from 0 to 40 metres. The recorded film is then analysed by specialists for composition of species, coverage and lower growth boundary. The recorded film indicates if there are any alterations in the algae community. By establishing systems for continuous surveillance of fjords, the aqua farming industry wants to obtain documentation and knowledge of long-term effects. The common perception of aqua farming's influence on the environment is of great importance to the industry. For them, it is central to secure a mode of production as environmentally sustainable as possible. Further on, building a good reputation, both for each individual company and for the regional industry as a whole, is crucial, since popular opinion has a strong impact on framework conditions. Research results from the project are frequently published in reports. The documentation they provide makes it easy to point out any changes that have occurred which one needs to be aware of. So far, the project has shown a satisfactory water quality. The Institute of Marine Research utilizes data from the project and have assessed the risk of regional eutrophication of coastal waters from Rogoland and northwards as low with today's level of fish production.